Hey guys, this is Brian, and I am here with a special guest, and we're going to talk about blogs. So would you please introduce yourself? Yes. My name is Jillian Richards, and I'm the visual arts teacher at Coppell Middle School East. Awesome. And Miss Richards, what is the name of your blog? The Idea Factory Art with Mrs. Richards. And why did you decide to start blogging? It was a threefold thought process from the start. When I started the blog, I worked in a school where many of the parents worked two to three jobs and were unable to attend school events or events in the community. I wanted those parents to be able to see what we were accomplishing in the classroom and see the outcomes of our learning. A part of this was to also help create a dialogue between the parent and student about their work. Uh, this also included an opportunity for a better understanding of how I run my classroom and why I run it the way that I do. This leads to additional reasons as to why I wanted to start blogging, and that was to advocate for the learner and for my discipline. The learner often feels their artwork is for the classroom, hallway, and maybe the proverbial fridge art at home. 21st century learners need more outlets and connections to the world around them. They need to see that their artwork is validated on platforms outside of school. Visual art is just that, it's visual. I decided to put into practice the idea that people believe what they can see. I wanted to advocate for visual art and cross-curricular studies. The community needs to see the learning, the life skills, the problem solving, the critical and abstract thinking that takes place in the art room. So what sort of things do you blog about? Well, I have permanent tabs on the blog for informational purposes. I share links to advocate improved parent and student communication, and I also offer digital learning opportunities. I post images and information about student artwork, visual art state and local events, and, as, and also student results um, of art competitions. We celebrate the accomplishments of the art students and their works. Students direct and create their own posts uh, regarding information about their artwork. They create videos and Google Docs to share and demonstrate the process of their work and the final product. Yeah, and I know that that's something that I really love about your blog is I love whenever you are celebrating their works, their accomplishments, giving them that voice. Um, kids love it too whenever their work is being celebrated on there. So really appreciate seeing that. Um, so next question here is how does blogging connect your classroom globally? Well, in our art room, we utilize Google Blogger, which instantly connects us globally with everyone who has internet access. It connects us with other bloggers in the field of art as well. This has been a great tool for me as an educator because it's much like social media in that I can follow other bloggers and they can follow me, and we're allowed to collaborate through this type of forum. Viewers can also leave comments for the students, which allows the student to truly grasp the understanding that their work is being admired outside of the school. And lastly here, what sort of advice would you give to someone who is just starting their blog? Well, I actually have a lot of advice. Um, I've been doing, working on the blog for I think four years now, and every year it kind of evolves and changes. Um, I think one of the most important things is to find a blogging tool that you're comfortable with. Um, if design is not your strong suit, you need to find a site that has templates that are ready for you to fill with your information. Um, when choosing a template, I think that you can also consider creating a site, um, like a Weebly site or something like that, that you can utilize as a blogging tool that's not really a blogger. Um, but you want to choose something that represents your students and what they learn. Keep it organized and be thoughtful about your presentation. Um, I think it's really important to share information, of course appropriate information, about yourself um, because the community loves it. And that regards all the stakeholders in your community. Um, as far as posting, pace yourself. Your posts don't have to be long or in-depth to every detail. You need to remember that it is visual and a lot of images go a long way. The average time a viewer spends on a site reading is nominal. They are more attracted and drawn to the imagery that you're sharing, especially when it comes to parents and they want to see images of their student's work or images of their learner in the process of learning. Um, post when you can. 
If you have a few hours, create several posts. You can set them up to become visible on specific days at specific times. So don't feel like you have to make a post every single day. Realistically, I would say three to four posts a month is a, is a high level poster for an educator. Um, be prepared to have your phone or iPad out at all times because you are documenting visually what's happening in your classroom. And if you teach multiple grade levels like I do, then you are doing that threefold. Um, you need to have fun with it. The students love to have their photo taken or a photo of their work. It doesn't always have to end up on the blog, but they know that you cared to take the photo. And that being said, prepare to do a photo dump and purge old photos that you are never going to use. I have many times ran out of space on my personal phone taking photos to post on the blog and have to sit down and really purge through some photos. That's awesome. That's great advice. Uh, thank you, Mrs. Richards. Uh, once again, the name of her blog is The Idea Factory Art with Mrs. Richards. Thank you very much. Awesome. Thank you.